Hunter x Hunter, episode 77. Unease X and Exciting. We met Kaite. Yeah, it has to be something with animals, right? Forced to take another life. Oh no, they're learning. Right. <laughs> More relevant to the current situation. They've developed lungs. But you children are the exception. <laughs> I got good and bad news for you. You're going to be forced to take a lot of lives. I was thinking though, there's something brilliant about having ants or insects in general being the new antagonists of the series, especially considering the timing of this arc, because Gon and Kluwa now are, are at this point where they've gotten a lot stronger. They're not top of the Nen list, but they have extreme Nen power. But we haven't been able to use destructive power or fighting at all because of uh, <laughs> ethical concerns. Having the enemies be animals or zombies or machines or what have you opens the door where you can do anything and not have the, the associated accompanying guilt, unless you're Kite, presumably. Then again, Gon has shown su surprising consideration for the lives of animals. This might be his hardest emotional arc, even worse than when all those human beings were gunned down during the Phantom Troop arc. But are they insects? I bet they're insects. Or not. One of them is a bear. Spin? That's also a familiar name. Imagine being nine, and you go, you can already say you've quit the most prestigious job in the world. Why is your face like that? You're a spin stick. Biologist, am I right? Oh, there we go. You're saving the best for last. I have feel like we're getting introduced to these people as fodder for, for death in the Chimera Ant arc. Come along, kids. <laughs> it's highly dangerous, but you're along for the ride. You're here now, so... Right, do, do Gon and Kluwe even know where they are? They just kind of warped here. Money continues to be unimportant for top level hunters. I can't watch this arc and not think of the movie Mimic. They're mimic. They're mimicking. <laughs> they're evolving to imitate their their greatest predator, man. Okay, points for points for Jing. I went down a whole mental rabbit hole last episode about like maybe Jing is a psycho. <laughs> this time around, just stack some points in the good column. While his ultimate MO and goal isn't clear, he is doing a lot of good for a lot of really talented people. I mean, Kite is doing so much with his life, doing some great work for the world, and that's largely possible because he was pulled out of his state by Jing. As I mentioned, there's a case that it's a it's a mirror or, or foreshadowing for Gon, who already is doing things like that. I mean, Kluo was already on that path, but Gon is helping Kluo a lot. There was also the criminal they met in the Great Island Desert Canyon. There's a chance for Gon to be like Jing, but more, or maybe take the best elements of his father and move past it for his own reasons. It is a little bit odd that Jing is the least hands-on with Gon. If I try to sit in Gon's perspective, there is something potentially upsetting about the fact that he's going around meeting all these people and teaching all these people, keeping an eye on them, but not doing that as hands-on or directly for Gon himself. But to give him the benefit of the doubt, it could be that Gon is someone that he fears the most because it's so directly close to the heart. It's his son. Jing, at the end of the day, is human and there could be a lot of tangled emotions there. I was just struck with this because Kite is kind of the man. I mean, this is really impressive what he's doing. You imagine that's largely Jing's influence. And again, reading something very positive into Jing. It is a framework for thinking about life and other people that I have felt and have noticed and people I deeply admire, where they judge people or invest in people, not based on where they are currently, but the potential they have. And having a strong internal 
desire to want to see people and enjoy seeing people reach their greatest potential. It's interesting for me to think about people and oneself in this light. There are people I meet who are, you know, in a certain way of looking at it in a very societal, judgmental way of looking at it, in a somewhat simple, not high reaching place, but you end up being really happy for them and enjoy being in their presence and interacting with them because you get the sense they are kind of where they expected to be and want to be. On the contrary, you meet people who are, you know, in name, objectively, doing a lot, but you can still see ways in which they are still holding themselves back from what they could be. They haven't worked out a lot of the important things for themselves about who they are, what they want, where they're going. They hide behind vices and excuses. And even though those people maybe materially are better off, they leave you with a feeling of disappointment maybe, or sort of longing for more from them. And in looking at oneself, I think a measure of one's own contentness and joy in life is not always what you have, but what you have and what you are relative to what you feel about yourself. Ways in which you know you're not doing what you could do, ways in which you're letting yourself down, ways in which you're violating your own values and principles, unfulfilled dreams that you're not going for out of fear or other emotional headwinds. I think everyone has the experience in some categories of being low on a certain ladder, right? But being really happy and content there because you just don't really have any interest or desire for that ladder. And despite that being in a low position, you feel great about your position there. And I'm sure people have the experience in at least one category where you're relatively high on the ladder, but you feel unsatisfied at that position on the ladder because you know how much higher you could climb that ladder. And it also means a great deal to you to be able to climb higher on that ladder. Jing seems to be the person that has that kind of potential based outlook, a talent for spotting that potential and seeing where circumstance is the obstacle and like helping them out of that circumstance so that they can climb. And also perhaps a genuine joy at seeing people reach their potential, which if true would be amazing. <laughs> Oh, that was a given. Hmm? Oh, you're here, so... Right, I mean, they've earned it as well. Something about this kid's features bother me. It's like they just drew less <laughs> on his face. Or her face? You're gonna die in the Khmer Anarch. <laughs> oh, that's kind of how we roll. If you're good people, you know, you're with us. Right, because Hunter is life. Being a hunter is being a person. Yeah, then we can, we can deal with the psychopath tendencies later. <laughs> I guess that's a commonality between Jing and Gon as well. That DNA is strong. Another fish live lost. Life lost? Another bat life lost. Indiscriminate eating. Yeah, all these animals just thin gruel. You know, a real meal. The most dangerous prey. Man. Oh. This is real? This is not real, but awesome. That is wild, but cool. こうして生まれた第一世代のアリには繁殖能力はなく、働きアリや兵隊アリになるんだ。This I think is real. To ant, ant life, right? Oh, something has come with Ahsoka, kind of. And then presumably the offspring will get stronger and stronger. That snake learned a lesson today. That's exactly how it happened. <laughs> Very hands-off parenting here. Mom more worried about spoon etiquette than <laughs> near-death experiences of her children. This is how I imagine old-school parenting. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Here we go. Once again, household looking a little bit too happy for anime. Just eating the whole forest. This could scale so quickly. Went from a sol solo proprietor to a conglomerate. Steve Jobs over here. <laughs> Oh no, and she's sick. 
I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that, but cute. Uh, kids. Brother's like, ugh, weird. I don't know if there are any fish left. Oh, wow. Oh no, here we go. I don't think a stick is gonna help you this time. You need a much bigger stick. Run. What? Wow. Wow, they just killed kids. They just, they violated. A sick. Oh my god, her ribbon! Wow, they just. They, wow. They violated a, a unwritten rule of horror in a joyful anime. You don't kill kids and dogs. Though Mimic did. Both. Or it happens in the same scene. Damn, that was dirty. They just introduced that whole thing. The whole family and the two kids. Just to have them be an ant snack. I kind of love it in, in like a terrible way. <laughs> like. <laughs> Oh man, it's it's also somewhat subversive, not to overuse this term, for anime because you get a lot of these kids, like I'm gonna be brave, and then inevitably the hero comes in and saves them, and then they're still commended for their bravery. Like, it's okay you're not strong enough. Your heart is strong <laughs> because you stood up to the monster. <laughs> not this time, Deku is not here. You're just food, the ultimate food. Okay, I think this makes sense why we see like insect humans in the intro. I wonder if memories are retained. <laughs> Okay, he has the Tanjiro nose. If Tanjiro can do it, why can't Gon? Oh, okay. This is a very educational episode of Hunter x Hunter. <laughs> yeah, the fact that they're splitting up, uh, they're definitely underestimating the danger here. Maybe we can check up on Kuripika and see where he is on the in the gang hierarchy now. It's hilarious to me that to think Kuripika throwing all this is just in a gang. It's just li living a mafia life. Speaking of things differing from expectations, you expect it to be like just for the arc, you know, like oh, I'm just gonna be in the mob for a bit for this arc to get what I need out of it. Out of it, but for Kuripika, it's just life now. Kuripika rolled the job dice and got mob, and you know, ended up being a great fit. <laughs> Maybe Kai is taking it seriously more than others. Yes, those two things together are deadly. And it's over once like the cycle starts going. It's already too late. Oh, there's our brave little boy. Get the, the greatest food. The most amazing food. Damn, abs though. Oh, that's true, children have the best abs. Yeah, it's just out there in the world, feasting. It's actually really cool, it's really well conceived, this whole ant thing and their powers and the, the breeding. So much potential. It seems like kind of a twist on the idea of epigenetics, or like how it's not just raw DNA code passed from one organism to the next, but like experience or events in the organism's life reshape DNA so that the DNA of offspring is informed by relevant information in the parent's life. This is sort of in the realm of sci-fi, but you wonder, is that not like a future stage of evolution or why has that not been advantageous enough to become a thing? Like there's some waste in being born as a baby and not having the memories of your parents, not having the lived experience. Think about how crazy it would be if like you were born with everything all of your ancestors had experienced and knew that you can then build on instead of being an infant and having to like relearn everything learn all of human life for you know 18 20 30 years so that you can get to the creation stage instead of the development stage i mean there are some examples of this in nature sort of but it's a lot less direct it's kind of like how animals including humans have a fear of certain things that are coded with historical or ancestral threats even without ever having seen them like those famous videos of cats being startled by cucumbers because there's been enough evolutionary survival pressure that on some level they have a working concept from birth of snake shapes and how in humans most of the time if 
perhaps not all the time. Phobias are frequently aligned with things that contain survival threats like spiders, insects, the worst ever titan whose name I don't even want to say that the giant titan in AOT. The phobia that comes from that probably has to do with disease, heights, etc. Again, this is in the realm of sci-fi, but I always thought it would be an interesting premise to have like a new species emerge or like one human as the beginning of a new species that has like full epigenetic memory where there is no loss from parent to child. Like how quickly that species would surpass any living human. Come to think of it, that's sort of the concept behind the fear of AI. You combine something like that here with something equally terrifying, which is rapid reproduction. And <laughs> total lack of remorse when it comes to murder, murdering these organisms, and you have a very, very interesting villain setup.